some of your best ideas, some of your most in-depth quotes and your life-changing moments are going to come from your the most challenging times. Get a pencil out. This is what I figured out early on. I write it down. I say, hold on, you're going through this for a reason. How can I help myself through this? I took a note for myself. Look at, I just read you back the note. It was from 2019, but we could go years back. I have notes from 2000 and some things just memorize. Just, I just know because I've been through the process. Things that I've just sold, quotes that I've developed over the years. I share with you guys. I just could retrieve a lot of people. Where did that come from? It may came from a book that I read 17 years ago, but it stuck with me. You get what I'm saying? Or it, or it, it spoke in volumes. It, it did something to me. It, it affected me in a positive way. So that's why I always say invest in yourself. Some of the, some of the wisest people say, like Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, um, and just so many others tell you, your biggest investment is in yourself. Not in that degree. I mean, yes, we need the degrees. I mean, degrees can help you, you know, keep food on the table and whatever else. And, and even give you a voice to a certain extent. But um, self-development, that's one of the wisest ways to invest in yourself. And you will see, like, so many things that is in that that is inside of me it comes out <laughs> like the whatever you invest in you invest in wisdom you invest in knowledge it's going to come out what are you what are you overflowing with so and i'm i'm telling you when people there's no excuse to invest in yourself i did it all most of the investment i did on webinars and books, and conferences, and courses, and just so many different things to self-develop. Learning from the greats, I did it all, mostly not even making 30000 a year, for the most part. I could, I could not afford not to invest in myself. Thing that, that goes back to how much are you willing to invest in yourself? I was the type of person, if I had to choose a class or a course before I chose food, I literally did it. I can tell you the days, the times, and show you the receipts that, I, that I've done it. And that's why I say document your journey. Because when you're able to show someone on paper, it speaks in volumes. When somebody has seen the process, now let's put that together. When you have people that have seen, oh, I seen she was grinding, she was working three jobs, she was doing X, Y, Z, and then you come and back it up with, yeah, here's my receipts, here's so-and-so, on this day I took this course, on this day X, all of that, and put it together. It speaks in volumes. So when I tell you my life speaks for itself, I say it for a reason. Despite any kind of lies, smear, or slander. Most of the time, when people hear your story, when they hear your grind, and you know how to articulate what you've been through, that's one thing right by itself. When you learn how to articulate and speak and tell about your experiences and tell what you have overcome, that will put you in a room with greatness right by itself. I cannot tell you how many doorways have come open just by people hearing my story. Matter of fact, I had people to sow into my life financially that I didn't even meet. At times, I didn't even meet. They said, uh, you're the girl that's so-and-so-and-so. And so. You're the girl that's working three. Because I was at the time, I'm like, 20, I mean, they called me a girl. I was 20-something years old. You're the one that everybody was talking about on camp. You're the one that, okay? So, that's why I said, being about your business, grinding. Grinding to the point to where you're going to get somebody's attention. Not to say it like that, but I just, I see everybody else as other humans. I see, like, if you're great, you're great. But as far as intimidation, I tell everybody, get your self-esteem up and know who you are. And that comes through you going through the process. Because when, when that happens, that will shut down that int intimidation. And a lot of times with me, I listen to you and, like, I, I take different perspectives 
to a certain degree where a lot of people be like, oh, well, she is she, is she intimidated? No, it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm not intimidated. I know who I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'd say, I don't even like to use the word hump. Well, humble means patience. Humble does not mean being somebody's doormat, okay? Humble does not mean dealing with a narcissist. Humble does not mean dealing with abuse of any kind from anyone. Let's be clear on that. <laughs> I think I like Gary V so much because in in stature he's a little man, okay? But in in what do you want to call it? Greatness, he's a giant. And you get what I'm saying? And, and that's how I feel like I even say that's how I feel about me myself, but I know I'm like this this slim, this little cause a lot of people meet me and they'll be like, her little self, her little self. Like I mean I'm tall, but they'll be like, oh her little self. And I'm like, yeah, I might be small small in physical stature, but I'm not small <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> honey. I'm a giant in some areas. And I know that. And I, I mean that's why for a long time I wouldn't I wouldn't verbally say that, but I would be thinking that <laughs> in my mind. I would be like, honey, I'm a giant in some areas. So I just sit back and I just be like, mm-hmm. Um and I, and I think a lot of people kind of pick that up, like, later on, you know. But I knew I had a voice. I knew I had a voice, and I knew I had something to say. And who is that? Lisa Nichols says, when you get the world's attention, you better have something to say. When you open up your mouth, you better have something to say. That's why I know I make, well, I, I think I make a few, you, most of you guys get my humor. Um, but for the most part, I bring you greatness. I bring you truth. I bring you expertise. I bring you motivation from experience, from firsthand experience. Um, and I'm confident in that. Because I knew I wish I had somebody that, that somebody could have made these videos. Somebody that could have told me all of the things that I've already invested in. Somebody could have let me know that. You get what I'm saying? Um, and a lot of people... A lot of people call it today. They say, can I pick your brain? I really don't like that term. But I will say, um, and a lot of people say, no, you know, you'll have to pay a fee. You'll have to, you know, I'm too. And then some people, they, they have made it to that level of success where they feel like if you want time with me, then you got to invest with money, like with me. And I, I get that, but I also get giving a hustle for free. You get what I'm saying? And this is why I say that. I feel like I relate to giving a hustle for free to a certain extent. So people can know who, who you are and what you're about. How do they even know they want to invest in you until they know your story? Until they know what you're about. So that's why I'm kind of like, and I get, I get what people are saying though, that uh, motivational, you know, some of the top six figure speakers, motivational speakers, I know, I know the process of what they've been. I've studied them. I've, I took their courses. I know what it takes. Um, and, and, I'm, and it's always shifting. It's always um, changing. I'm always learning. But I've learned from some of the top motivational speakers that are international speakers of top five in the nation. So I'm not just telling you this, going on this little rebel. Like I said, y'all, that's why a lot of times in my videos, I give you a screenshot. I say, look, here's the receipt. Here's this. Here's that. Um to let you know that I'm not just somebody going on around rambling talking about motivation that hadn't my journey my journey of motivational speaking kind of happened by I, matter of fact I think it was 2009 when I did this is how I knew I was I mean I knew like I said we talked about a story when I was small and learning that I had something to say and learning that I was kind of before my time but also my first speech ever was a, I never did, did a small speech, y'all. The speeches I did, I started out doing a, a speech of 500 or more people. The, the next speech, like, I started, what was that, 2009, 2008, 2009? Like, this is, I started out big stage speaking, basically. Being asked for, I didn't even, I didn't even plan that, like, 